Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to that one video that I said I'd do for 700 subscribers, which is ranking all of my rap songs. So the way it works is pretty simple. We have three tiers. My magnum opus, LOL, which is good, mid, which is mid, and might delete later, which is bad. And I will be giving all of these songs a ranking. Pretty self-explanatory, but I also know that there are people watching this that don't know how a tier list works, and I, I feel like I need to play it safe, you know? Also, just a disclaimer, I will not be including songs from my mixtape Meet the Family, link in description, only because that song has not been out for long enough, and I feel like I couldn't give it a fair ranking, so it's just gonna range from Know You Well to Certified Freak. And with all of that being said, let's jump into it, starting with Know You Well. Know You Well is pretty interesting because, for starters, it's my first ever song, but it also has a bit of history to it. So I wrote this song initially when my friend Scary was getting into beef with this guy named Saucy. And I remember initially when I wrote this song, I wanted it to be a completely solo song. But then Scary actually reached out to me and was like, hey, can I be a feature on the song as well? I said yes, of course. He actually had writer's block when he was initially working on his verse. So I legit just gave him the one that I was going to use and let him use that. His timing was off, but I feel like because it was supposed to be garbage, like, like not even a joke, this was supposed to be garbage from the start. I feel like the awful timing sort of works in my favor. So yeah, I got to give it credit where credit's due and put it in magnum opus status. Deep End is also pretty interesting. I remember I watched this video a while ago. It was called something like the scariest subgenre of rap or something like that. And it was about this subgenre called Memphis Horrorcore, or I think it was just called Horrorcore. But I remember when I watched that video, I was like, I want to make something like that. So I made Deep End as a sort of tip of the hat to that. It's basically a storytelling rap about this kid who starts to go into the hood, who starts to be a bit of a thug, but then is told by his friend that he isn't really cut out for this lifestyle, and then he... I'll let you guess what he did next. I'm still low-key proud of this song, just because, like, it was my first attempt at, like, really old-school rap, and even, like, as, as amateur as it was, I'm still pretty proud of this. So I'm going to put this in magnum opus as well. A is just like a meme rap song that I made with my friend Man Jr. It's it's not really significant to my career as a rapper, so I'm just going to put it in mid. There isn't really a crazy backstory to this. But Make It Stop, on the other hand, this one has probably the most interesting backstory so far. So this one's actually a diss track on a guy named Afro, because he tried to date a 14 year old girl despite being like 40 himself. So this one is interesting one because it started the trend that I have of dissing people but it also really made me think about my lyrics. This is the song where I started really thinking about my lyricism, you know? Also, I still get this comment from Scary all the time saying that the hook is probably the best part of the song even though it's legit just me going make it stop over and over with like a scream sample in between. I appreciate it, but it's not really that clever, you know? Have some fun. This one is probably the first one that I can safely say that I don't like. So there's a bit of like behind the scenes controversy with this song. Like no one outright said that this song was bad, but there was initially a, supposed to be a verse from me on that song. But when I was gonna do it, Scary was like, hey, can I also have this part in the song? And admittedly, back then, I was a bit of a pushover. I was a little scared that Scary would get mad at me for saying no, so I let him. This is one of those songs that I can safely say went horribly wrong. I will say, though, I am still definitely considering doing another song with me, Scary, and Man Jr. on it, but it probably won't be for a while. I'm still sort of recovering, I guess. From, from this incident. Bluey Freestyle. This one probably has the craziest backstory out of all of the songs I made. So a while back, I learned that Scary and Man Jr. would actually diss each other for fun. And I was like, you know what? I want to do that too. And I wanted to be funny and theme my diss track against him around Bluey. 
But here's the thing. I didn't know shit about that show. So this song is the reason that I'm into Bluey now. This this is the one. This is the song right here that got me into Bluey. I'm surprised that people actually like this song to this day. But I also made a re-recording of this song. So I guess I also like it to a degree. So I'm going to give it its due credit and put it in magnum opus. Want Me Dead. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Want Me Dead probably makes me cringe the hardest. This is actually the first ever song that I sang on, and it is just so, so bad. I'm not going to play it for you because it's ass, but it is on that rap playlist. It's still up on my YouTube channel, so you can go listen to it if you want to for some reason. But I will say, though, if there's one thing I can say about this song is that it is the reason I have started... Uh, but if there's one thing I can say about this song, it is the reason I have started letting my friends help me write my stuff. So I'm putting it in might delete. You know what? I'm putting this in mid. Oh, geez. Oh, oh, geez. As much as I don't like this song, I'm still going to, I'm not going to put it in might delete later. I'm probably going to put it in mid because... This did have a significant impact on some of the future songs that I made. This is actually the reason that I have started like having a bit more fun with some of the stuff I do. And yeah, I gotta give it credit for that. But I can't put it in magnum opus because I, I don't really like it that much. New Whip. I'm gonna be honest, I kind of regret making this. This was actually a diss track on Snake like a year ago. And I'm gonna be honest with you. Looking back, I really should not have let someone as insignificant as Snake occupy such a large portion of my mind. So I'm going to put it in might delete later because I kind of regret making it. Steve Cuts. I'm going to be honest with you, as poorly made as this was, I still kind of have a soft spot for it. This was actually a diss track on a guy named Steve Cuts for being a sort of fake activist, you know? Like, he would try to, like, make statements against, like, corporate greed, but he still sold, like, framed pictures of his work for, like, $100. And honestly, that's kind of cringe, so I'm... Just because I hate Steve Cut so much, I'm putting it in magnum open status. No longer the same. So this was actually a concept song that I made for uh, one of Scary's tapes. I think it was Afterlife, but it was based on the story of Scary is Dead, where like it was basically like, how would I respond to Scary's death? And honestly, again, as poorly made as it was, I still low-key have a soft spot for it, albeit I like it a lot less than I do Steve Cut. so I'm still gonna put it in mid. Gang Love. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't really like this song too much, but I will say it is pretty funny, so I'm gonna put it in mid. Rinse and Repeat. This one's actually really significant because it marked the era of me using BandLab to record all of my rapping instead of FL Studio and using my dad's PC instead of my MacBook. And honestly, I think this turned out really good, and I think it's because of this song that my rapping has gotten a bit better. So yeah, magnum opus status, well deserved. The Sign, the sequel to the greatest rap song to ever grace the human ear. Felony, this actually has a fair bit to say. Like forget what I said about Louis Freestyle. This has the craziest backstory of them all. So this was originally a diss track on the Bluey community, specifically the Bluey subreddit. And, you know, it, it's a diss track. It does the job. It does what it needs to do. Well, shortly after I posted Felony, the Bluey subreddit actually implemented a rule that prevented people from posting ship art of the child characters. So this song actually aged like milk in probably the best way possible. The only way it could age any worse is if Joe Brum could actually confirm that he did not get the idea for that scene in the sign from the internet. So, yeah, magnum opus, I think it has earned it. Alive and Breathing. I think this is actually the first song where the beat that I made for this song stands out more than anything else. I really wanted to do, like, a sort of Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion type beat with, like, the hard piano stabs, and I think it really works for this song. So, yeah, magnum opus status. Yes, dumb shit for real. This is actually significant because this is the first time 
that I had ever collabed with someone who wasn't like a close friend of mine. This one I actually collabed with Goosey Floods on this one. I will link his Spotify in the description below, but the only reason we know each other is through a meme rap group chat on Instagram. So that's cool. And Certified Freak. This is actually the first song that I've sang on since Want Me Dead, and I'm gonna be completely honest, I did so much better on that song. Like, I know I was using, like, hella autotune, but it still sounded much better. And also, this was one of the first songs that I sort of took a back seat for when it came to lyricism, and I'm really glad I did, because it turned out to be much more fun to work on, so I'm putting this in magnum opus. Well, here it is, my complete tier list of all of the songs I have ever worked on. So if you like this video, please leave a like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below, and I will see y'all next time. Bye.